Hi, Elliot here from The Retro Future. It's been quite a while since we've sat down and just looked at a fake sort of emulating console that seeks to look like other popular things so that it grabs more attention. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the LD300 or the Q90 or the A90. Honestly, at this point, it's every letter under the sun. I've seen it be called a million different things, which is gonna make this video somewhat more confusing, uh, but I'll probably go with a generic title anyway in the hopes that I can reach a new audience because this is so niche I can hardly afford to survive. Anyway, let's get into it. So this ain't gonna be a super polished video, however, I will read out these specifications for you and then we'll move very quickly on to actually taking a look at the device. So there is a three inch full view HD IPS hard to screen long term game without fatigue, compatible with situ open source system, customizable personalized UI and install app. Hi with 1500 milliamp hour BP4 LDL, Battery, long battery life of six hours. Perfect compatible with 15 mainstream emulator. Supports tens of thousands of transplant games. GB, GBC, GBA, MD, FC, GG, SFC, NGP, MS, WS, PS, FBA, PCE, CPS. Game format kind of game. Music feature, no one cares. That is all that is on their website. I'm sure there are some more specifications of the RAM and the CPU which I can pop up on the screen because editing is something we can do. So, let's take a look then at the box. That's enough. Right, let's just, oh, honestly, I'm going mental because I've done so, so many, so many of these at this point and I'm not too hopeful, not gonna lie. Inside the box, we have a USB-C cable, which is actually rather nice, rather nice. We've got all of the generic gubbins, you know, this thing, the game machine product warranty card. There isn't a warranty, let's be honest. If it breaks, you're screwed. Chinese manual, oh, English manual. So there is the actual device itself. It fits right in the palm of thy hand. Uh, we've got L1 and R1, but we don't have L2 and R2, which is gonna make some people very upset. We have got a little analog nub, which is fairly nice, not gonna lie. Relatively grippy, not rubberized, so you will uh, end up hurting your finger after a while. We've got pretty nice feeling membraned buttons, membraned. Start and select is also membrane. Uh, D-pad is also membrane micro switched plus and minus, which only time will tell what they do, but it's obviously to make it look like a uh, Nintendo Switch. And on the side, we've got our little volume wheel, uh, USB-C on the top, as I said, power switch on the side, micro, US, micro SD and headphone port on the bottom. Interestingly, mine has come with a 16 gigabyte CPI Pro 41, all a load of rubbish, 16 gigabyte, also probably a load of rubbish. I'm not gonna put it in my computer to try and find out, um, but hopefully it'll be preloaded with thousands of games. I say hopefully, I do not condone piracy or illegal ROM downloads or anything illegal, in, to be honest with you. Um, we've got dual speaker on the back, which is actually rather nice. That means it will have stereo output, providing the games you're playing also have stereo output, which should actually be all of them. Game Boys only had mono speakers, but they most of them had headphones, so they do actually all have uh, stereo out. So that looks like, why is there tape over that? Why is there tape over that? I'm very curious to know. Maybe it's like a warranty seal. Is that what it's called? A warranty seal. I feel like that's what that is because if you, obviously you can see there, I've tried to just peel it off of my thumb and it's just gone completely terribly. But yeah, Nokia battery. It's not even a Nokia clone battery. There's literally a sticker on there which says Nokia on it. So Pretty good, you can swap them out with other ones if you so wish. So, let's turn it on, that's enough waffle. It's a pretty nice size, I suppose. The plastic doesn't feel too cheap. I mean, it doesn't feel expensive, but it doesn't feel too cheap. One thing that is a massive letdown, plastic lens. Why would that even be a thing? So, it's the same software we've seen before, nothing too particularly special. We've got a load of emulators built in, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Famicom, Super Famicom, Game Gear, Master System, Mega Drive, 
PlayStation, Neo Geo Pocket, Wondus One, PC Engine, and then arcade games, which is probably our Capcom arcade machines. Then we've got all of the generic built-in games like Doom and Cave Story, and, and then we've got all our settings and stuff. Again, no one's interested in that. We've got a file explorer, and then we've got our settings, and that's about it. So. Let's just go through the different emulators. So let's start with the Game Boy. Absolutely no problems with this at all. Playing Super Mario Land will show whether or not this device has screen tear or not. And the answer is no. Everything loaded in perfectly well. There's options obviously to save and load states as well as the ability to change the scaling of the screen so you can have this uh, accurate resolution or you can actually change it to the 1 1 pixel resolution which is obviously going to make the screen very small but incredibly clear. Game Boy Color ROMs are just scattered within the Game Boy ROMs, so the emulator is the same. Again, perfectly fine, no issues at all. It seems that they're getting to a point where everything is just really optimized for these sort of low-powered devices. So, yeah, no sacrifices made, perfectly fine. Game Boy Advance was the best I've ever seen. Honestly, very surprising, you know. I thought this was going to be a bit lackluster, but actually, it turned out to really start exciting me. I got incredibly lost in this game and played the entire round. No lag, no latency, vibrant screen colors. You can change the scaling as with the Game Boy. You can obviously save and load states. I'm not gonna mention that again because you can do that for all of them. Absolutely perfect. Famicom slash Nintendo Entertainment System was fine. Really don't need to talk about this a lot. Obviously I'm playing another side scroller here so you can see that there's no screen tear. There was no audio glitches or anything which sometimes is a worry for these sorts of devices but this one run really well. Now onto some bad news. Yoshi's Island is a game that utilizes a slightly more powerful chip within the Super Nintendo and this did not work at all. Very choppy, audio glitches throughout, latency, just the whole package of bad. It was just <laughs> honestly unplayable. However, I did load up another game and it was perfect. It was absolutely seamless. So it's not gonna be all of them, just the games that require a slightly more demanding processing power. Game Gear was beautiful. The Game Gear screen is really not very good at all. So to play Game Gear games on this vibrant IPS screen, which is obviously 60 Hertz, is an absolute treat. You sort of unveil colors that you didn't even know were in these games. So it's an absolute pleasure to play them on this device. And there was no issues with it at all, other than the fact that I'm just really bad at these games. Master System was absolutely fine. I would have been very concerned if there was an issue here. No issues at all. Vibrant colors, great sound, just perfect experience all round. Mega Drive can often be a bit of a sketchy one with emulating sound, but this was absolutely flawless. I didn't notice any issues at all. Hopefully you can hear that there was no sort of glitches with the audio. Absolutely fine on the visual front, no issues loading anything in. PlayStation 1 is going to be a case-by-case -case basis, don't expect too much for it, after all it is a $50 device, but it seemed to work absolutely fine, remember there's no L2 or R2. Now when it came to Neo Geo Pocket, I was very let down. Cotton is an incredibly expensive Neo Geo Pocket colour game, so I thought I'd give this one a bash. I thought it was a very slow, so I loaded up Sonic Pocket Adventure, which was a game that I've played a bit more of, and yeah, this was awful. I'm wiggling my finger here to show you I'm not slowing it down. Absolutely unplayable. Wonders One is a Japanese exclusive console, so unfortunately any text-based games are somewhat unplayable unless you can read Japanese, which is a bit of a letdown because Final Fantasy is a game that is really beautiful on the Wonders One, but absolutely redundant for me. But these sorts of games and puzzle games work fine. PC Engine was a disgrace. Absolutely no directional input, no matter what configuration I had it in. I tried multiple different things, multiple different games, and I could not move. Disaster. Now, the arcade games was a very pleasant experience. The menu system showed game art, which was really beautiful. Big shame they couldn't carry that out throughout the whole device, but I'm not very familiar with these Capcom games. I didn't seem to have any issues at all. You'll have to let me know in the comments and take it for what it's worth and sort of make your own judgment. But yeah, no issues with latency, very silky smooth. I'm really bad at these games, so I do apologize. But yeah, very nice experience. You can hopefully get a 
bit of an idea of how nice the colors are here. That is gonna wrap up this video. I really hope you've enjoyed. Uh, as I mentioned at the start, I haven't done one of these videos in a while where I've just sat down and reviewed an aftermarket sort of emulating cheapo knockoff thing. So it's quite fun to just sit down and have a chat and look at this thing. At the end of the day, it's a $50 device that honestly on AliExpress you can find for like $35 that does so much, it does so much. I don't really endorse the fact that it comes with ROMs on there. Um, although you can back up your games that you've got using various different uh, ROM dumping tools and stuff so you can play your actual library of games. I don't endorse the illegal stuff, but it is a great device and I did enjoy uh, playing on it. So yeah, it's a shame that a few things didn't work very well. The Neo Geo Pocket Color has massively let this thing down. I really like Neo Geo Pocket Color and the fact that it couldn't hack that is a big shame. Not so fast about PC Engine, but definitely Neo Geo Pocket sucks. I don't think it needs to look like a Switch Lite. I think they should steer clear from doing that. It's a bit, uh, it loses their credibility. I think they go for more original stuff, like the LDK, that little square thing was really cool. So yeah, go back to that. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Just checking, I turned my microphone on. Yes, I did. I hope you guys have enjoyed. See you later.